Day 77. This is where we camped last night. We're fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> We've been studying the map for hours trying to figure out the low road because the weather's supposed to be bad today and tomorrow again. Whew. But it's not raining right now. All right, we've had enough sunshine and we warmed up and dried out a little bit. Ready to talk a bit about tomorrow. I'll post a video next that Adam took. It was like four o'clock and we needed to go up and over a pass and that's when the storm hit. And it was windy and it was corn snow and it was ice pellets and then it was uh, sleety, slushy snow, and then just full on rain. And we kept going down. After lower elevation, we ate a quick dinner, and then we met up with a hiker named Cash 22, headed Sobo the other way. And as we were standing there talking to him, getting colder and colder, Tristan just fell over and passed out. And then we got him to come to, and he's like, I didn't pass out, because I didn't miss any part of my book. And, and then he threw up, <laughs> and I'm sure Cash 22 thought we were a total mess. But we got Tristan into camp, and quickly got him in his tent, dried him out, and he just kept insisting he was fine, and had a chipper good attitude, and every many minute through the night, and now we're going over logs through very wet swamp and we have a river crossing up ahead and poor Kaya's blisters are so bad she's wearing sandals. We're okay, everything's okay. If we were quieter, I bet we would see moose. There's lots of moose prints, moose poop, but there's no bridge. Also, I must note that because yesterday it was so hard, um, not a lot of water was being consumed because, you know, it was high altitude, we're pushing hard, it's raining, it's wet, and Tristan admitted he had only had like a half a liter or three-fourths of a liter all day and a lot of that was lemonade he had got from Chipotle the night before <laughs> so he was dehydrated and we're attributing that to why he passed out and threw up here we are bailing down Jones Pass for more information on this moment in our trail story check out our Patreon blog which is free essentially in a nutshell we just had to get up and over this pass so that we can meet up with my mom near Clear Creek to get the kids to her because they had had it with the Colorado storms and blisters and it was rough. There go my mom and Jay and their four children. <laughs> Kaya had really bad blisters. Tristan was probably feeling 100% fine but wanted to go down to my mom's house and I couldn't just say only three kids could go or two kids so all of them are going and they're gonna shower and do laundry and get warmed up and Adam and I have two more days of high altitude trail and some not so great weather but we're gonna find a place to camp and then over there is the highway we'll get up to Bertha Pass early tomorrow hopefully and start um, the miles, the miles that we need to get. So we're just organizing our food and calling it good. Adam and I just got an easy hitch from a guy from Honduras. Now we're at Bertha Pass admiring their Continental Divide Trail Monument. Pretty exciting stuff. And he 
even a heated bathroom. So there's the top of Colorado Mines Peak. We climbed up and over with it. Adam's taking off his jacket. There's a look down, Winter Park. There's a hairpin turns of high, no, Highway 40. You barely see a Winter Park ski lift over there. And we are headed there to Mount Pepora. All right, here's the view to the southeast. That looks like the storm that's gathering. We're trying to beat by one o'clock. <laughs> that's one of the major reasons we sent the kids to my parents' house. Well, we just had a fun reunion on the top of Mount Flora. We met up with four hikers we've met before, wild turkey, topo, old timer, and gravity. And it was super fun chatting with them. There were three ladies just on a day hike from Chicago and they were just blown away by, you know, all the trail talk and the reunion and they took our picture and it was a lot of fun. Chatting with everybody, the sun came out, we got to dry out our gear and Gravity and OT told us to not even think about trying to summit James Peak today. The storm's supposed to hit at one o'clock. There's no way We'll be up and over, so we're rethinking our plan. Staying safe. So it's 1.15 in the afternoon. We've been hunkered down in our tent for an hour. I'm hoping you can hear some of the thunder. Um, we're looking at our maps. We've made it six and a half miles or so. But um, hopefully this storm will pass by three o'clock. I'm just trying to stay warm and dry. Listen, Marmot, we need you to get off of our trail, okay? I know you think it's your trail, but we need to head this way. I think it's day 79. We're almost to the top of James Peak, unless that's a false summit. Nope, no geological marker. Here's a little shelter. There's the view down to Winter Park and Fraser. And there's Adam. We're just coming off James Peak, and below us is a natural phenomena. All those trees weren't killed by beetles or avalanche, but from a crazy wind burst. And up ahead, we are gonna have to go around a similar mess that happened on the trail, but it just is impassable, terrible. I'm pretty excited about our lunch spot today. Look at that cool old railroad bridge. We're at Rogers Pass. Back there, the weather where we had lunch, very nice. Stopped and talked to a couple of tourists uh, up here. The weather we're walking into, not nice.
We couldn't avoid the blowdowns entirely. I should have filmed earlier with giant trees, giant root balls, just uprooted from the ground. Here we are, still climbing on rocks. Adam says he's going to be really upset if he has to swim to find the trail. <laughs> but we think in about 500 feet, it should be right up ahead that way. And the mosquitoes, the mosquitoes are so bad. Some more footage of the destruction. We just had to climb over a lot of trees. We made it, we made it. And as a reward for surviving the bushwhack, I found my favorite flower, elephant heads. I wonder if I can get close enough. They look like actual elephant trunks on those flowers. I love them. Somebody has been here with a chainsaw. Adam says it's like a freeway. Now, we just need to work our way through. Hopefully, uh, find a safe spot to camp away from any fallen trees. <laughs> Trial report, day 80. Even though we sent up our tent in the pouring rain last night, Mosquitoes continued to follow us, and now there's like an army of 50 of them just waiting for us to get out of our tent. We're so grateful. Trail maintenance has already made it through this section. Man, this is just miles and miles of those blown down trees. It's incredible. Can't imagine how hard it was to be the first on the scene and clear this up. It's like they've had to cut a path straight through a lumber yard. This should be it. This should be the meadow that we see big animals like moose and elk. But alas, all we see is poop but it sure is beautiful. All of a sudden our trail opened up with this huge view. Oh, that's beautiful. There goes Jay and Ruby. Here we are at Lake Granby. Oh, it's beautiful. This reminds me of Washington. There's on Tristan, the all excited. See there? Got Mirror keeping an eye on me. Here we go. It's a beautiful day to have Dad and Jay join us. It rained on us for a spec when they first arrived, but we're hoping we're hoping it'll stay dry. There's a beautiful view appreciation video real quick. I'm at the back of the train because I keep stopping to take videos. <laughs> and they're going so fast. Are they even looking around and appreciating this? Oh my goodness, we are so lucky. We were hearing thunder during dinner, but I think we're gonna escape it. And this is our view as we walk to find a spot to camp. Oh, it's such a beautiful evening. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Day 81, it's Friday, July 2nd. We're hiking along this little arm of the Colorado River, which is exciting. This is where the Colorado River begins. We've been to where the Rio Grande begins, and we're headed to a place, Adam says is called Two Oceans, where this creek splits and one goes to the Atlantic and one goes to the Pacific. Hello, cow moose. Hey, just... Why... Why are you coming straight towards us, I wonder? Why are you coming so close? 
so many beautiful flowers today. This is an awesome meadow, Rocky Mountain National Park. There's Shadow Mountain, walking around it, seeing all the 4th of July weekend boaters and jet skiers and pontooners. Ruby is pining over the fact that that isn't her life. <laughs> oh well, you're better off for it, Ruby. Human powered adventures. Yeah, but Ruby, does that really look more fun than what we're doing? Yeah. <laughs>